Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my loves. Here we are. I promised you guys that I was going to be more proactive on my channel and that's what I've been doing. I tried to go live because I am extremely hyped right now with coffee. I have tons of caffeine running through me. I'm basically running off of caffeine right now and I have till midnight because we have tons of spell work. It is Witching Friday. So I decided to go live, but for some reason the internet kept just crashing, not sure what's going on. Um, so yeah, instead of, you know, experiencing difficulties like I did last time I went live, I had to re-record another video for you guys because uh, it, for some reason it skipped out on the last three signs. Um, I decided to just go ahead and record this for you guys. This is going to be for those of you guys that are wanting to know how your person feels about you. So we're going to get into it and see exactly where they're at, exactly what they feel and what is their next course of action towards you. This is going to be for all zodiac signs. If you guys are interested in any personal consultations or any personal spell work, I do encourage you guys to click the link on the description box below. You'll be able to find my Shopify on there. It is the busiest season. We've kicked it off already and we're getting tons of orders. Um, if you do happen to go on there to get some type of spell work and it is out of stock, it's not that it's out of stock. It's just that we are, you know, dealing with a lot. Um, so just keep an eye out for that uh, as well as readings. Um, it will say that it's, you know, not available just because we are so backed up. Like I said, it's the busiest season. So you guys are trying to get that. Definitely get it now um, before we actually have to pause those for a bit. Uh, like I said, it is the busiest season. People are getting ready for the new year, etc. So um, there you go. If you guys are interested in any of the manifestation books or any of the shadow book journals, all of that is on the description box below. I also want to let you guys know that we have a new um, journal that I'm going to be taking out. It's not, it's a book, um, but it's more so on a journal level. It's for those of you guys that are trying to, to learn the tarot cards in a very simplistic way, as well as it gives you um, pages where you can, you know, when you're connecting with each card so you can write your own interpretations. You guys know that I highly encourage you guys to awaken your intuition. So just letting you guys know that that is to be coming soon. I will be announcing it when it's available. All of our books and journals, you can find the links on the Amazon below every video. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty after that long ass intro. Are you guys excited about Halloween? Because I am. It is the beginning of the season for us. We celebrate everything over here on this side. <laughs> so we're pretty ecstatic about that. All right, my loves, let's begin with the readings. This is going to, we're going to begin with Libra here. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, how does a Libra's person feel? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Libra. How is your person feeling about you, Libra? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys enjoy these videos, don't forget to like, share, comment hit that notification bell and subscribe so you guys can help our algorithm okay like i said i'm going to be putting more effort towards this channel i know the past two years i haven't been that proactive but uh you know i, I said i would <laughs> so we're trying to do that you guys can also expect tons of new spell videos coming not just for love for money, for finances, for protection, but also um, I've been getting a lot of feedback from my followers on Instagram as well as Snapchat. Um, people wanting, you know, like anti-bullying spells and stuff like that for their kids or for them to focus better in school. So you guys can expect all of that coming to you guys. All right, here we go, Libra. Let's see what's going on with you guys in regards to love and romance. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. How do their person feels about them how does libra's person feel about them all right here we go libra let's see what's going on with you guys let's see what is going on with libras libra it is your season brightest of blessings for those of you guys that are experiencing the return of the sun all right Oof. okay all right, so what I'm seeing here, and let's go into the general energy here. We have uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Oops, I did it upside down. Wait, is it? Give me one second, you guys. 
Nope. Okay. So we have the Wheel of Fortune. It came up reverse. I don't do reversals, um, but I'm taking it as a message here. So with the Wheel of Fortune, it is an indication that there's a situation that will be turning around. However, there's resistance on your part, Libra. So whatever it is that you're currently experiencing when we're talking about this connection with this relationship, I highly encourage you to try the best you can to take things for what they are or what is unfolding for you right now. Let me raise this a little bit more. Um, and the reason for that is because you're being shown that there is a cycle that you need to let go of or you need to release. Now, right at the center here, crowning the energy is the Seven of Swords. So this is indicating to me not only deception and lies, um, perhaps things that are or have been kept hidden from you, um, but I feel it more in your space, Libra. So there is something that you're not accepting or that you're not being completely honest with yourself about in regards to this connection. Now, when we see the hanged man, you're trying to see the situation um, from a different perspective. Here's the thing, Libra. When, like, we can make up all the excuses in the world of why the person is lacking on what we're expecting when it comes to relationships, but this is where the Seven of Swords comes in. Are you being... Are you being honest with yourself? Are you, because there is a difference between wanting to manifest something and wishful thinking. And what I mean by that is even in the process of manifestation, let's just say you're trying to manifest stability in this connection or in this relationship. You have to feel that that person is capable of giving what you're asking for or what you're wanting or what you're expecting for it to come through. So if there are certain things that obviously you've dealt with and that you've gone through in this connection that make you feel the opposite of that, then you are in the position of being wish, like wishful thinking, hoping that it's going to change, but it's not. And it's not because that person is not to your vibration or to your quality of what you're expecting when it comes to partnerships. So it's time for you to be honest with yourself and let go of this connection that keeps you stumped and slumped and keeps you from experiencing that loving, healthy relationship that you're worthy and deserving of. Okay. And in regards to this person's feelings and their thoughts, we have the Two of Cups. Yes, there's love there. Um, perhaps this is a situation that you've been dealing for a very long time. And there's love there, but it's kind of like what I've experienced, what I experienced, what I've explained to you guys in previous videos. Sometimes people can love us in the most demented in the most unhealthy of ways and it doesn't diminish the fact that they do authentically feel love but you need to understand that not everyone's going to love like you and that's the problem when we talk about relationships that we settle we settle and sometimes settling puts you in a position of being with the person that does not know they are not understanding or capable of loving you the way you deserve to be loved the way you the way your soul needs to be loved so again yes there's love there but the advice here is the nine of pentacles it's about embracing your singlehood it's about knowing what you deserve and no longer settling no longer being or playing the position of a placeholder now, I don't know what situation you guys are dealing with, but I am hearing placeholder. Um, if you're dealing with a person that keeps coming back to you, but doesn't give you consistency and stability or, or a commitment, it's because this person doesn't see you as long term. And I know that's harsh, but what they're saying here is 
if you know that what you're wanting is a long-term committed relationship, why are you entertaining someone that is giving you the opposite of that? That's settling. And the advice is the nine of pentacles. Embrace being single for a bit. Bring it back to yourself and work on yourself. Work on understanding or knowing your worthiness and that, yes, you do deserve what you want. And just because this person is incapable of giving you that, it does not mean that you're not worthy of it. It's just not with this person. And there's a decision to be made. The nine of pentacles with the lover's card is being at crossroads. And it's almost like the universe continuously keeps telling you, you need to be single or you need to bring it back to yourself. Focus on yourself, work on yourself, heal yourself to be able to bring the person that is meant for you. Sometimes, and I heard placeholder, right? And to me, that immediately indicates that you're playing the part of someone floating in someone's life, meaning when things are not going the way they expect, they come running back to you because you feel comfortable because they know you're going to continuously keep putting up with their fuckery. But here's the thing. Placeholder can also indicate they are serving as your placeholder because you're so attached to wanting this to become something long term without you realizing if you even like this person, Libra. Are they the type of person that you want to be with? Do they have the qualities and characteristics that you look for in a long-term partnership? Probably not. So they're also playing the part of a placeholder. Why? Because they're kind of blocking you from experiencing the type of connection that you're worthy and deserving of and that you want at this point. And it's coming to you, Libra, but they are telling you, you got to stop lying to yourself. You got to stop. Here's the thing. People will... If you allow people to take advantage of you and to keep playing you, they're going to keep doing that shit till you're black and blue. Until you keep allowing it, they will continue. Right? And in that process, what's happening is that it's diminishing your light. It's watering yourself down. As well as when you, when someone is mistreating you, you can't sit there and tell them, why did you hurt me? Why did you stab me? Why did you trip me over? When you gave them all the tools to do so. So, sorry, I had to have a sip of my coffee. Um, yeah, so what they're saying here is, you're at crossroads right now. My advice, Libra, is if this is resonating with you, it's time that you stop being afraid of being alone because even being in this connection, you feel alone. At least you have the freedom to know that you can up and go anywhere you want, do anything you want, put yourself out there and have fun without having someone that is slowly diminishing your light every chance they get all right my loves yeah we're starting off um pretty heavy here <laughs> all right moving on let's see what's going on with scorpio scorpio sun moon rising venus how does their person feel how does scorpio's person feel Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sorry, you guys. Completely forgot to shut it out. All right. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Scorpio? Let's see what's going on. Here we go. All right, Scorpio, we're starting off here with the lovers. Seven of swords, ten of cups, four of, sorry, the empress. I said four, I was going to say four of cups, and the five 
Uh, sorry, the chariot. I'm seeing numbers, you guys. Sorry. All right, general energy here, the eight of cups in reverse. Why are these cards coming out in reverse, you guys? I don't do reversals. All right. This is really irking me, so I'm going to go through all of them. I don't know why. You guys, I apologize. Give me a minute. Oh, I think I know why. My nephew and niece came, came here earlier. They, they, they're very curious, you know? They know what their auntie be doing. And they be playing on my desk. So they were probably messing with the cards, you guys. <laughs> Little rascals. Yeah, because most of them are straight. I'm not sure what happened there. All right, so I'm going to continue straightening up my cards the reason why I don't do reversals you guys is because when spirits communicating to me they communicate uh, imagery words numbers through my mind's eye so I don't necessarily I use the cards more so as a dowsing kind of um, the moment my hands touch the cards I immediately go into this meditative state where I can tune in and receive the messages very clear. So it's more like a tool to open my awareness. Um, so yeah, I don't necessarily need reversals. They will let me know. Um, so that's the reason why. But anyways, I shall continue. So we have the Eight of Cups and not reversed energy. I mean, it was, it showed up as reverse, but I just realized that my little buggers were here earlier and they probably messed with the cards. So, <laughs> um, so with the eight of cups as your general energy, there is situations uh, that are unfolding right now where you may feel like you're a little bit hesitant about walking away from this connection um, or like you are ready to begin a new journey. And when I say a new journey, I mean away from this connection, right? Now, right at the center, we have the lover's card with the seven of swords. Um, so this is indicative to me, and this is in your position, Scorpio. So I feel like for some of you guys, there's something that you are keeping or hiding from your person. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're dealing with someone else. Um, I feel this has more to do with the fear of either hurting their feelings or the fear of making a decision. Okay, I get it. So I'm getting two different messages. For some of you guys, this could be a connection uh, of someone that you're currently seeing. For others of you, this could be a connection with someone from your past that you're still keeping around or that you're still in communication with. Whereas at some point in the past couple of weeks, there was a feeling of wanting to walk away from the situation altogether. But I see you hesitating because there is, it's almost like you're not being completely truthful and honest with yourself about this connection. And the reason for this is because I feel like you're holding back or you're not expressing fully how you should be or how you really feel. Um, and it has more to do with you. Like I see you prancing around the situation. So for some of you guys, you're having difficulty expressing or communicating to your partner. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Um, you're being mindful. But the thing here is that in doing that, it's putting you in a position of stagnation and a bit of frustration because you feel like you're not being your authentic self. So if this is connecting with you, what they're telling you is express how you're feeling. Don't let things get bottled up to the point of like, exploding um don't let things get bottled up to the point where you're just you, you've just had it address it and for some of you guys this is a toxic trait so this is something that they're talking to you about where you need to heal this aspect to yourself um and what what's coming to mind is you know passive aggressiveness sometimes as an example 
your partner upsets you, you don't say anything, but then they try to be all lovey dovey and you kind of pull away or, you know, a bit of mean spirited. And the reason is because they hurt your feelings. What they're telling you is they, they're highly encouraging you to express your feelings, to express how you feel. Now, if this person is making you feel like you cannot express yourself, then that's the issue. And that's something that you have to address. Are you being honest and realistic with yourself in regards to this connection? Because if you feel like you have to alter certain aspects about yourself to accommodate this connection, you're going to get to a point of feeling like you can't really be who you are. And that gets tiring. That becomes a burden. Um, so for some of you guys here with the Ten of Cups, it tens are always a cycle or a closing cycle. Um, but I feel like you guys are closing the gap or you guys will be closing the gap if there's been a bit of distancing between you and your partner. Or perhaps you've been feeling like your partner hasn't been, been completely honest with you. or And because of this distancing, what's really happening is not that they're hiding anything from you, Scorpio. It has more to do with the fact that they feel like you are either holding back or they feel like they have to hold back because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Um, again, my advice is have an open hearted conversation. That's what's going to clear all the issue here because honestly, I feel like it has more to do with communication. Both of you guys are in your head overthinking or overanalyzing and that's what's creating the friction or the distancing in this connection because their position is the Ten of Cups. They are in it. Okay? Now, if this is someone you're recently dealing with, it could be that you guys are just holding back. You're holding back feelings. You're holding back how you really want to proceed. You're holding back how you guys truly feel for each other. But there is a conversation that's going to be coming up in the next week or so where you guys, you, both of you are going to feel comfortable enough to actually open up and profess or confess each other's feelings for each other. That is going to bring the balance and restoration of this connection. Now, if you are involved and have been involved with this person for a long time, like I said, having an open hearted conversation is going to clear the air. Because with the Seven of Swords, I feel like this is more your energy and it's almost like you're being very methodical. Like they say something and you try to read between the lines and it's like you guys are kind of trying to one up each other. But the reason for it is because you guys are literally having to guess what the other person is feeling or thinking. And it's just a lot of work and a lot of effort for nothing because it's creating miscommunication. Now, when we talk about the action that you need to take it's the empress so come from a loving place speak your truth be honest be vulnerable sometimes that's necessary scorpio and the outcome here is the chariot so you guys will continue uh, to strengthen this bond you guys will continue to get on the same page and move forward in a very positive way now for others of you if this is like i said a person that you've been dealing with from the past it's time to close that gap it's time to close and walk away from this situation that is no longer serving you, right? With the Eight of Cups here, so that you can walk towards what you're destined because this center is always the present and the right is always what's unfolding. A long-term committed loving relationship that is going to move rather quickly as, as long as we can get, you know, as long as we can get the doubts and the holding on to things from the past that are no longer serving us. Even for those of you Scorpios that are currently in a relationship and you've been feeling there's been a distancing and you know deep down inside you've been entertaining or communicating casually with an ex-partner, their energy is affecting this connection. So you got to get rid of that energy. A lot of you guys are being tested right now um, with Pluto. And it's about, did you learn the lessons from the past so that we can continue walking towards a more stable, strong, solid foundation? Or are you going to continue building on weak structure and wait for the destruction to happen because you were holding on to fears or you were having trouble letting go of the past or you were dragging the past and it's affecting you now or it will affect you? So be mindful of that, Scorpio. All right, my loves, moving on. 
Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does Sagittarius person feel about them? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you guys are interested in any personal services, spell work, or readings, you guys can click the description box below. You'll be able to find our Shopify. Um, I highly encourage you guys to do that because, like I said in the beginning of the intro, it is the biggest, uh, the biggest, it is the biggest and the busiest season for us. So, uh, if let's say in a month or so you try to schedule an appointment and it says sold out, it's because we are trying to catch up to the orders. Okay. Just letting you guys know. All right. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? How does their person feel about Sagittarius? Let's see what's going on here. Also, you guys stay out on the lookout. I will be releasing a book slash journal for those of you guys that are trying to learn the tarot cards. That is soon to be coming out as well as we are restocking on your favorite uh, uh, soap spells, uh, the soap line. We are restocking for the holidays, so you guys uh, stay tuned for that. All right, we're starting off here with the Two of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Six of Wands, King of Pentacles, and the Three. Wow, a lot of Pentacles here. All right, Sagittarius, let's see. Bottom of the deck, we have the Tower. So, Pluto Energy. Could be the explosive energy that we're currently experiencing, right? With the eclipse that we just had. There is, every time I see the tower, it indicates it already happened. So there was some type of awakening. There was some type of, a bit of turmoil when it comes to this connection. Or, not necessarily connection, I heard feelings. So for some of you guys, there is revelation of feelings. Maybe something that you've been hiding or maybe you've been trying to run away from connections feelings um but it's almost like i'm not seeing it as i'm not seeing it as a like tower moment i'm seeing it more on a spiritual level for some of you guys this is like an awakening this is an understanding this is an aha moment that you're experiencing or will be experiencing right at the center we have the two of pentacles so the two of pentacles is having the need to bring balance into this connection right with the Six of Pentacles and the Six of Wands, the two sixes here. So off the gate, what I'm seeing, especially because there's a lot of pentacles, you guys are working on or you're feeling like your clock is ticking for some of you guys. For others of you, you're feeling like you're wanting stability. If it's not bringing you stability, you're not wasting your time anymore. And this is restoring your balance. This is restoring your power for some of you guys. On a spur of a moment, you decided to walk away from a connection. For others of you, the universe revealed something to you that really gave you the push that you needed to make the decision of bringing balance into this connection or into your love life in general. Now, Six of Pentacles is realizing and understanding the balance, but also the give and take, right? Six of Wands is ego and pride. Have you been putting effort and energy towards a person that is stubborn and does not want to change? Are you the one that has been trying to accommodate them? Are you changing? Are you changing in the process of trying to change this person? And not in a positive way. Are you changing and is this person bringing out the worst in you? Because what they're telling you right now, Sagittarius, is that it's very important for you to take your power back. There is a dynamic in this connection where someone has had the upper hand this whole time in this connection. And for a lot of you guys, this is the person you're dealing with. They're running off of ego and pride. They're running off of their ego having the need to be inflated. Whereas you've been giving, you've been trying, you've been trying to understand them, you've been trying to see the things on from their perspective, 
but there's a need for balance in this connection. Now, the advice here for you is the King of Pentacles. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with an Earth energy. For others of you, there's an Earth energy that is going to be coming in to this dynamic. The Tower can also reveal unexpected news about someone that you may potentially go to in regards to this connection. This could be a friend. This could be someone that you work with and you're telling them what you're experiencing or what you're going through and they give you genuine, authentic advice to the best of your interest. But guess what? There's a revelation for some of you guys. So for some of you guys, I see a person confessing feelings for you. And it comes as a surprise. Why? It comes as a surprise the moment you decide to take your power back. So what I'm seeing here for you guys is there is a dynamic that's happening right now in your relationships or in your connections, Sagittarius, in regards to how this person feels about you. The Six of Wands indicates this is a person that knows what they want, goes after it for the accolades. Or to say, you know, I had them, or I got them, or whatever. Whereas you're coming from the Six of Pentacles energy. You're trying to meet them halfway. You're trying to give. You're trying to, you know, put effort. So there is a need to restore the balance. And the only way to restore the balance in this connection is by you taking your power back. Within taking your power back, I see someone revealing feelings for you. So what I'm seeing here is as the advice position you have, not advice, sorry, as the outcome, you have the three of pentacles. And the three of pentacles indicates to me, especially because this king of pentacles is looking towards it. What I'm seeing here is, you know how sometimes they say, um, well, in Spanish, we say uh, un clavo saca otro clavo, which indicates, or I guess the slang uh, terminology of that in English is like you get over someone by getting under someone. <laughs> I'm not encouraging that, you guys, but this is what I see. I feel like you've been dealing with this situation or with this person for a while. They have, you have literally experienced a tower moment where you're being forced or pushed to take your power back. And what that means is start to stand on your ground, be about your business, or stand on business. The moment you're doing this, there is someone that's revealing feelings for you that is already around your energy and is very aware of this connection or this relationship. So I feel you being sick and tired with the tower, right? You've had it, you're done. But what gives you, I guess, the inspiration to dare to believe, Sagittarius, that you deserve better is because someone else is going to be giving you advice or being around your energy that is going to bring more inspiration and helps you see how amazing you are. And that's what helps restore your power and restore your balance. All right, my loves, that took a quick turn, right? I did not see a third party. <laughs> and it's not to say that it's a third party because I feel like for some of you guys, if this is resonating, you're already like thinking of walking away or you're, you're already like you've had it. You're tired of putting up with people's shit. And kudos to you. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does Capricorn's person... Oh, I got cards flying out. Give me one second. I said Capricorn. I got all nervous, you guys. <laughs> that was my son Capricorn. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <clears throat> all right, here we go. All right, spirit guides, what are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? How does their person feel about them? How does Capricorn's person feel about them? Give us insight. Give us clarity. Let's see what's going on with Capis. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Cappy, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right, here we go, Cappy. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Oh, all right, here we go. It's funny because this is the card that popped out when I was shuffling. Okay, Nine of Cups here. We have the Chariot. We have the Seven of Swords. We have the King of Swords. And we have the Page of Swords. Bottom of the deck, Tower. What the hell? Okay. So for some of you guys, you could be connecting with the Sagittarius or Sagittarius could be connecting with you. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is with the tower, for some of you guys, you guys are really like going through it or have been going through it. You've been dealing with instability. You've been dealing with, I know what it is. So what they're showing me is having a diamond in your hands or feeling like you have a diamond in your hands and you're walking towards it and the more you walk towards it, the more it goes away. So there is a feeling of why can I be happy or why can I have my end all be all? So for some of you guys, you're being challenged right now, Capricorn. You're being challenged in being able to sit back and receive the blessings that you're worthy of and deserving of. What do I mean by this? We have three swords. This is the mind, right? This is our mental chatter. This is what we tell ourselves when no one is watching us or when no one is hearing us. This is how we speak to ourselves. So there is a bit of contradictory energy going on. Right at the center is the Nine of Cups. Happiness, wish fulfillment, right? Being emotionally stable, being emotionally abundant. We have the Chariot. It's trying to come towards you. It's tr it's really trying, Capricorn. It's really trying to come towards you. It's really, this connection or this person is like, the moment you allow it, they quickly come towards you or they're like, you know, giving you the attention and, and, and the affection, but then you're quickly thinking, why are they giving me this attention all of a sudden? Why are they calling me? Why are they blowing me up all of a sudden? It's like they're trying to come towards you, but you're quick to shut them out because there is a fear here about them being deceitful or not being completely honest or not being transparent. But I'm going to be honest with you. King of Swords is to me, out of all the kings, well, Earth energy too, but King of Swords is a very straightforward type of energy. So what do I mean by this? If you feel like your partner is giving you mixed signals or like they're not telling you exactly what it is that they want in this connection or how they feel about you and you feel like they're playing games, it's not that they're playing games. It has more to do with the fact that you think you don't deserve to either be loved or to be committed or you don't feel worthy enough of their commitment to you now for some of you guys it could be that you're dealing with the person that's betrayed you in the past right or that they've cheated on you not to say that they haven't done that it just depends but what i'm seeing with the seven of swords here especially because it's next to the nine of cups when things are good or when they try to be good you block that you block it by constantly giving in your mental chatter thinking negatively they show up with roses. Oh, why are they bringing me roses? All of a sudden, they never do that. And then you you vocalize that. So what you're doing is you're basically training them to believe that doing nice things for, for Capricorn is a red flag for them. So I'm going to stop. Communicating or texting them more often is pissing them off because they're saying that all of a sudden. So I'm just going to you get what I'm saying? There's like a tug and pull type of energy that's going on, but it's not on the partner side. It's on your side, Capricorn. With the tower here, this is Pluto energy. Pluto is currently again in your sign in the last degree. And it's getting ready to finally move out of your sign. And 
not in your lifetime are you going to see it again. So have you learned the lessons that you've been forced to go through the past 16 years? Especially when we talk about relationships and partnerships. And I know out of all the signs, Capricorns, you know, you guys do have a tendency of being very harsh on your partners, but the reason for that is because you're very harsh on yourself. And the reason why you're harsh on yourself is because from a very young age, you're taught that love does not come easy. You're taught that love must be earned, whether it's on your mother's side or your father's side. That's Saturnian energy. So what they're showing me here is that there is a, and I'm going to be honest for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are connecting with this message, they're telling me that there is some of you guys experiencing generational curses being removed. And what I mean by that is if you're a female and you look towards the females in your family, do they most often than not? either divorce or their relationships doesn't work out and they become single mothers. Or if you're a masculine, are the masculines in your family the unstable ones? Because there is something that is in correlation with this tower here and it's a break, right? The cutting of cords, the releasing, the ending cycle of something that's been very catastrophic in the lineage. Maybe you experience that. Maybe you see that around you and you think that you don't deserve, you know, I get clients all the time. Like, I never thought I would get married. Why? Because, you know, the females in my family are all divorced or they never got married or vice versa. The guys, you know, I, I never thought that I would be able to settle because all the men in my family were very dysfunctional. So it's like whatever we experience, we take that as you know, our reality, but we can always shift our reality. We can always change it. You're being forced to change your way of thinking, Capricorn, so that you can fully experience happiness. And the seven of swords is in the position of your person. Seven of swords always indicates to me like being deceitful, being dishonest. Um, but because it's right next to very positive cards, the chariot and the nine of cups. It's like your constant feeling of your partner being the deceiver or your partner not being honest. Maybe for some of you guys, you just recently started dealing with this person. And just because they are like they're texting or their communication, maybe it's been up and down. It's like giving you red flags, but it doesn't mean that this person is deceitful. This is your defense mechanism kicking in. The advice here is the king of swords. And the king of swords is, hey, Capricorn, you need to learn to make decisions on a cool mind. What do I mean by this? Sometimes you get so intensely passionate in your feelings that you make irrational decisions or you make stupid decisions because you're so upset or because you're so wrapped up in the moment and sometimes we're like well my partner did this did this did that but have you ever thought how you treat and how you are as a person as a human to your partner do you get what i'm saying and this is I can tell you from personal experience, when I started doing shadow work many, many years ago, this is something I had to realize as well. You know, I, I, I have a very strong temper and I am about no fuckery. So sometimes I was extremely explicit, blunt, maybe even mean spirited to people that were just trying to love me. But I was so guarded that one little mishap of them would set me off and just be mean. And that affects the connection. It affects the relationship. Now, the outcome is honest communication, honest transparency. 
So what I'm seeing here for you Capricorns is that you're dealing with the situation that how your partner acts or how they've been acting is a reflection of your roller coaster of emotions. So if you feel like you're connecting with this message, sweetheart, do shadow work. The best advice I can tell you is sometimes we want people so bad, right? Sometimes we want them so bad that we don't realize any little thing they do sets us off to this snowball effect of like catastrophic thoughts that we think is happening and it's not really happening. And by you going down this route, what you're doing is you're blocking the blessings that are trying to be brought to you, Capricorn. Keep that in mind. All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does Aquarius person feel about them? How does Aquarius person feel about them? Let's see what's going on. Oh, we got cards flying out. I'm going to put them back. It's a lot of them. All right. How does Aquarius person feel about them? Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right. Here we go, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Well, let's see. Let's get to the needy greeting. All right, we're starting off here with the Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, Three of Pentacles, the Hermit, the Nine of Pentacles, bottom of the deck, Seven of Cups. Immediately when I see, <laughs> immediately when I see the Hermit here. Okay, so what I'm being shown is, I feel like you guys have been at this for a while, for some of you guys. Um, this is a connection where you've been trying to stabilize it or strengthen the foundation of this connection. But with the seven of cups here, I feel like you or your person may be entertaining other people. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, Aquarius. There is something about this person that really draws your attention, but it's not for the good things. I'm seeing a lot of pentacles for some of you guys. You just feel like this person, you know, is stable or you like, you feel some type of admiration or some type of respect for this person, right? And that's what really triggers your passion and your desire to be in this in this connection. Even though for some of you guys, you've been aware that this person has a wandering eye. Or for others of you, this could be you. See, y'all are kind of like on the same fuckery for some of you. Why do I say this? Because Eight of Wands is very intense in passion, right? It's also the arrows of love. And this is how you're viewing him or her. It's a physical connection, but it's looking towards more of the pentacles. So there is something about them. It could be their lifestyle. It could be what they represent to you. Um that makes you want to continue putting effort in this connection, even sometimes knowing that they have a wandering eye or that you have a wandering eye. And how this person is viewing you and viewing the situation is the Three of Pentacles. They're willing to work or put the work in, in this connection. But with the Hermit card here as the advice, again, I feel like, for a lot of you, the majority of you, I feel like it has, like, you guys are more, I don't know how to describe it. They're showing me, like, they're showing me lights and, like, flashiness. So that, to me, is, like, an indi indication that you're not necessarily falling for a person because you feel connected in a, on an emotional level. I feel like this is just your mind playing tricks. Like, maybe this is the best person you've ever dated. Maybe this is a higher quality type of person that you've dated in comparison to the rest. And that's the reason why you keep putting up with certain things. But it's not necessarily because there's love there. Do you get what I'm saying? And with the Hermit card here as your advice position, they're telling you, you need to go within. You need to figure it out, Aquarius. Because here's the thing, especially with the Three of Pentacles here, I feel like 
even if there is a restoration of the balance in this connection, right? The reason why, if it's you the one that has a wandering eye, the reason why you have a wandering eye is because this person is not fulfilling your emotional needs. So what does that mean? If a person is incapable of fulfilling your emotional needs, you're going to seek them out elsewhere, especially if you're a woman. Because feeling emotionally connected or emotionally validated or emotionally safe is what keeps a woman loyal. Not to say that men are not in some way that way, but more so for women. Um, so if if you feel like the admiration that you have for them is worth you putting up, even though maybe deep down inside, it's not really love. It's It's either that you fell for the idea of them or you fell for the illusion of who they are or who they present themselves or who they present the world or to the world. Um, but it's like, it is, is it really worth it is what I'm saying. If you are dealing with the person that has a wandering eye, as an example, when you love someone and you are emotionally invested in them, even if the whole world tells you it's not worth it, it's worth it to you. Because you are emotionally invested in that, right? In that connection, in that feeling. So in some shape, way, or form, it's kind of a validation. Do you get what I'm saying? But if there, but if there's no depthness of the connection, why put up with fuckery and nonsense? Do you get what I'm saying? And the reason I say that is internalizing or going within is probably going to lead you to making the decision of walking away from this connection, Aquarius. For others of you, especially those of you guys that are dealing with someone that has a wandering eye and it wasn't you, what I'm seeing is that you're coming to the realization, if, if, for some of you guys, it could just be physical. It could be that simple, that this person is physically very attracted or that you feel very drawn to them like a magnet um, because it's intense passion here. But... If you felt like you don't really know if you want to continue putting effort in this connection, in the next coming weeks, I see opportunities opening up for you where you're realizing that being with someone just because of the physical or just because what they're willing to do with you on a physical level, you want more, basically. And you deserve more. And you know this, Aquarius. So it's about internalizing and going within. The moment you're able to tap into your true authentic self, you're going to realize that you want something more than what this is. And you're choosing to either embrace your singlehood or you're choosing for the first time in a while to be independent. You're choosing yourself. And I know Aquarians don't have a problem with that. But this is very direct and to the point. It's realizing that this connection, and I'll be honest, for some of you guys, it's just, um, it's like an obsession, but I feel like it has more to do, especially on your side, it has more to do with like the physical. So what this person is physically able to do or what they're capable of doing, or they're just great in bed. And you override everything else that they do because of that. Or like I said, if you feel like they have, there's an upscale to them in comparison to the rest that you've dated. You know, if all you've dated has been Dusty's and this one all of a sudden started treating you a little bit better, but they're still not giving you the stability you're looking for, you're still settling Aquarius. And they're telling you this month or the remainder of this month, do not settle. Know your worth. All right. All righty. Damn, these are pretty, pretty harsh, harsh uh, readings coming through. All right. <laughs> Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does Pisces person feel about them? Pisces person. How do they feel about them? 
Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. How are my Pisces doing, you guys? Y'all have been really dragged this year. Honestly, all the Pisces I know have been really, really challenged because of Saturn. Because of Saturn, I blame Saturn. Even though it's my ruling planet, I know how horrible it could be to other signs. You know, we're built for this shit. But, <laughs> but Pisces... All right, y'all, you guys will survive this, Pisces. Just see it as a blessing because whatever you're going through, it's forcing you to see things for realistically what they are because ultimately Saturn wants to gift you and bless you with stable structure. All right, let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. How does the person feel about Pisces? Here we go, Pisces. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right. First card is the Ace of Swords, Lovers, ooh, ooh, Ten of Cups, Queen of Pentacles, Hierophant, bottom of the deck, Four of Swords, okay, so for some of you guys right now, especially those of you guys that are in no contact, or there's been a temporary separation, or there's been a pullback, or someone ghosted someone, um, that's not going to be for long. I see them making a move towards you, Pisces. With the Ace of Swords here, communication opens up. Um, if you guys have been feeling like a bit disconnected, if you're not dealing with distancing, like it could it could be um it could be emotional distancing, meaning like you guys are not in communication or contact right now. For others of you, it could be like physical distancing, like your person, you know, lives in a different place or a different country, or they have to travel or work, whatever. But I'm seeing the distancing coming, like coming together, closing that gap. There's communication that opens up. In regards to how you view this person with the lover's card, there's a lot of intensity, a lot of passion here on their side or on their part. Ten of Cups is the end all be all or them wanting to stabilize this connection to unionship because we have the Hierophant here. Uh, Queen of Pentacles here um, in the advice position. So again, if you guys are, if there's distancing or some type of separation, or for some of you guys, there was like a breakup and you're looking for reconciliation, I definitely see that happening this month for sure. There is communication that opens up, could happen anytime now. Um, with the Ace of Swords, it's very quick and to the point. Most of the time, it represents like a week's time. So um, again, it can be from, from now all the way to like a week or probably sooner than that. But what they're showing me here is that communication opens up. You guys are being able to be honest and transparent with each other. And I see you guys getting on the same page and walking towards a unionship commitment. If you guys weren't official or for some of you guys, if you guys were just dealing with like casualties, this person is opening up to you and they're revealing emotions and feelings that they've had for quite a while. But I feel like they were holding back. Again, with the Queen of Pentacles here as the advice position, what they're telling you is be practical in this process. What do I mean by this? If there's no communication or you guys have been temporarily like separated and you're very much in your feelings, Pisces, and you're wanting to act based on your emotions, don't do that because you don't want to self-sabotage. With the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles is a very practical energy. And what they're telling you is have faith. Have faith in yourself in knowing that you are worthy and you are deserving and that no one's just going to toss you or forget about you, that you know your worth, you know your value and stand in that power and watch how quickly this person comes back around and tries to give you or offer you the commitment that you've been searching for, that you've been hoping for for a while. Now, for others of you, and this is just some specific, they're giving me a specific number, so again, for some of you, if there was a recent separation because there was a third party or you found out that your partner was entertaining another person, I feel like you're getting clarity in the next coming week or so. And for some of you guys, you're finding out that this person has been maintaining another relationship away from your partnership. Now, for some of you, this message is going to connect. Now listen to what I'm saying because they're being very specific. 
if you if you've been with the person for longer than three years right so if you, you've been with them for three four five six years there was a separation that recently happened because they were entertaining other people or you caught them or you found out that they were dealing with someone else i feel like more things are going to be revealing to you or they're going to be coming out to the open where you're realizing that this person has been maintaining an actual full-on relationship with someone else and in that process of you finding that out which i hope i'm hoping for a lot of you guys this is not the case but for some of you guys, it's realizing that this person is actually in a committed relationship. So what I mean by that is marriage. Um, again, like I said, if you have been dealing with someone, you've been you've been with them for like over three years or more. I feel like this message may connect. Now, keep in mind um, what they're showing me here is, yeah, someone was being deceitful. And they were keeping a long-term committed relationship away from you. So I feel like it's not something you were aware of or, you know, that that you, it's not something that you were, we don't judge on this side, right? So what I'm saying is it doesn't come up as you were aware of this connection, but you will become aware of it, especially if there is a breakup. Um... Like I said, for those of you guys that have been with someone for like over two, three years, I want to say three to four years, um, and all of a sudden it came to you as a surprise. It's not a surprise, and the reason for this is because they've been maintaining another relationship or another committed relationship. So if you feel like you're confused about them coming around and telling you, you know what, I don't think this is going to work, and it came out of nowhere because you thought the relationship was going good, it's because they have someone else, and you will be finding out about this. They're showing me that there's a revelation that's happening. They're opening the door and shining light. So that to me signifies if you were left and you feel confused or like you need some type of closure because you didn't understand why it just ended, it's because of that and it will be revealed to you, Pisces. All right, my loves. I hope that that did not resonate with a lot of you guys. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does Aries' person feel about them? Let's see what's going on with my Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Let's see what's going on. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, you guys, and the notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. And I'm going to be more proactive in going live. Like I told you guys in the very beginning in the intro, I tried to go live today and for some reason it was glitching and I just didn't want to, I was scared of like doing the readings and then it cutting off like it did uh, a couple of days ago when I went live and I had to do another separate video. So I was kind of like hesitant about that. I didn't want to go through that. So I just decided to pre-record these videos, but I think I'm going to be going live on my, on my phone whenever I go live. Um, because that doesn't happen apparently with my phone. So you guys stay tuned because I am going to be going more often <laughs> on lives and you guys can expect tons of new spell videos as well as more readings. Okay. All right. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spare guides. What are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? How does their person feel about them? Let's get to the needy greedy here, Aries. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, here we go, Aries. How does their person feel about them? All right. We're starting off here with the Ten of Wands. We have the Ace of Wands. We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Six of Cups, the Three of Cups, and the Fool card. I'm laughing because I feel like, I feel like Virgo, I feel like Aries, Capricorn and Libra. You guys have been going like the readings I've been doing. It's like it, it keeps touching bases on a specific theme that you guys are dealing with. But let's get into the nitty gritty Aries with the full card. This is a renewed energy for some of you guys seeing this connection or this relationship through fresh eyes. And the reason I say that is because they're showing me almost like 
you know when a kid goes outside and they're not supposed to go outside <laughs> it's like they, the parents accidentally leave the door open and like they run out and like their eyes get all big and they're like looking all around and they're excited just to be you know out um that's the energy that i'm sensing with this full card and that indicates to me that there is a renewal in how you see this connection or this relationship there is something that's happening that you're experiencing or that you're being able to see in this person that you didn't see before so for some of you guys um it's realizing that yeah i do have feelings for this person and i'm going to be instead of so guarded with the full card i'm going to be reckless for once and the reason i say that is right at the center ten of uh wands so the ten of wands indicates to me realizing or understanding that there's a bit of stress in this connection or in this relationship maybe because you're very aware that this person is expecting or wanting something more stable for others of you you're literally going through it and this person is very unaware of your struggles or burdens because aries doesn't want to tell people that they are going through it right you guys don't want to show weakness um so i see you guys really trying to find the stability in your life and the reason i say that what's really standing out to me is this house right here and that to me is structure right so with the ten of wands it's like you're trying to find your balance or you're trying to find or steadily stand on your income or bring stability to your finances whereas that could be the reason what has kept you from like fully investing yourself in this connection or in this relationship Aries now how you view the person how you feel about them ace of wands there's a lot of passion there is a lot of very intense passionate connection here for some of you guys this is a person that I'm literally hearing is like your weakness or something about them is just incredibly like the connection you feel is very intense it's very passionate how this person is viewing you they're seeing this connection or this relationship as something that is predestined now especially with the six of cups for some of you guys you could be dealing with a soulmate connection here because we have the wheel of fortune which is destiny and the six of cups past lives past connections so i, I again i feel like for some of you guys especially those that if you are currently going through a bit of adversity or a bit of instability in your life and you feel like you can't fully invest in a connection or in a long-term relationship at this point because you're trying to stabilize that what spirit is showing me is that the moment you're able to embrace this connection meaning the the moment you let go of your fears right because that's a fear for some of you guys it's the fear of not being able to provide or not being able to bring um or maybe for some of you guys, it's the feeling of unworthiness, like they, like they deserve more. Um, but what Spirit is telling me is the moment you're able to fully embrace this connection and go into it like a free spirit, meaning with no, with no stress or worries about what this person is expecting from you, because I feel like this person... I feel like you're putting more pressure on yourself with the expectations that you think this person has over you and they really don't because they see you for who you are aries is what i'm saying so what they're showing me here is the moment you're willing to embrace this connection blessings are going to be pouring into your life it's almost like you need to work on this connection <laughs> for that so that you can experience not only abundance and reciprocation and true love in this connection but you're also going to be able to experience abundance and stability in every other aspect of your life, Aries. So very prominent energy here. Like I said, Wheel of Fortune with the Six of Cups, very predestined connection. For some of you guys, this could be a person that you've been knowing for a very long time. For some of you guys, it's you shooting your shot and getting out of the friend zone or them shooting the shot at you getting out of the friend zone because you've been knowing them for a while. But I do see an authentic, genuine connection here. And it's like whatever's unfolding right now, Aries, take it for what it is because this is your spirit guides doing divine timing and pushing you towards what is for you. So fully embrace it. Let go of your worries. Let go of your burdens. Let go of the feeling of not being enough because this person sees you for who you are and they embrace that. Okay? 
All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. How does Taurus person feel about them? How does Taurus person feel about them? Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus and Moon raising Venus. How does Taurus person feel about them? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on here. All right, Taurus, let's see. Let's get to the needy greedy. Okay, give me one second while I sip on my cup. I am literally running off of caffeine right now, you guys. I know, crazy. All right, here we go. We're starting off with the Queen of Wands. The Two of Swords, the Death card, the Eight of Cups, the Hermit, and bottom of the deck is the Ace of Swords. Okay, Taurus, you're getting clarity this week. I literally heard a week. Okay, so you're getting clarity this week in regards to a connection. I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's having to swallow a hard pill. It's realizing that you should have listened to your intuition. For some of you guys, it's realizing that you knew it all along, is what I'm hearing. I knew it all along. Um, but it was like you, you doubted yourself. You doubted the little voice within yourself. And that is always when you hear a very little voice, it's when you should really put it on speakerphone, meaning when you should really pay attention to that. Right at the center is the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Wands is all about confidence. It is all about understanding who you are, knowing the power that you possess, knowing that you are divine, whether you're female or masculine, it does not matter. Queen of Wands also represents magic, right? So it's understanding that you are magical, you are powerful. If something in you intuitively is telling you that it's wrong, it's probably wrong, Taurus. And the reason I say that is because how you're viewing the situation is the two of swords. You feel like you don't know what you're going to do or you feel like you don't know what's going on. But with the queen of wands right at the center, you know you're just refusing to accept certain things. How your partner or the person is seeing the situation is the death card. They're done. They're done, they've moved on, or they're going to move on. Now, for some of you, and the reason I'm saying this, I, I should be more tactful, but what I'm hearing is, for those of you guys that this is going to resonate, it's not going to come as a surprise because for some of you guys, you're probably not even in contact right now, or communication has been very non-existent, and the reason for this is because this person, I don't feel them giving you closure. I feel like they just are going to either ghost you or they're going to completely fall off the map because they've moved on. Your advice card here is the Eight of Cups. It's time to walk away. It's time to stand in your power. It's time for you to know that you deserve better. It's time that you understand that a person, a person that is worthy of you is never going to walk away because they know what it is or what the cost is going to be at the expense of losing you. Do you get me? Don't wait for someone to lose you and then see and realize that the grass is not greener on the other side so that they can come back around and tell you, I didn't know what I had until I lost you. Well, guess what? That's not my problem. That's a you problem because you should have had known what I am and who I am and what I bring to your life. And if you're not able to realize that, then it's not, it's not on you, Taurus. It's not on you to pacify them or to make their life better just because they decided to go somewhere else and it wasn't better. Do you get what I'm saying? So what they're telling you is stand in your power, stop hesitating. If you're dealing with this fuckery, if you're feeling like they're not communicating or something's up or something's going on and they're not, it's time for you to walk away. It's time for you to walk away, Taurus. Stop letting people create anxiety within you or create distrust in yourself in your own self in your own intuition because they're they're giving you such anxiousness energy that you're doubting yourself they're telling you walk away from this and find 
yourself again, Taurus. Find yourself again. You're being, literally, you're being guided. So whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, when it comes to this connection or this relationship, know that your guides are literally holding you by the hand and they are revealing to you what needs to be revealed so that you can get it. And so that you can have the courage, the tenacity, the power and confidence to walk away knowing it was their fuck up, not yours. All right, my loves. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Gemini? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Gemini? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my Geminis out there. I have tons of Gemini clients. If you're watching, hello, my loves. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them, Spirit? Okay, thank you. All right, Gemini, let's see what's going on with you guys. Let's get to the needy greedy here. All right, we're starting off with the Five of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, the Two of Wands, the Seven of Wands, bottom of the deck, temperance okay gemini okay what i'm hearing <laughs> i'm trying to figure out if i if i should filter it or not okay what they're showing me gemini is that you're going through a transmutation what does this mean this means that your awareness is being heightened and you're becoming more self-aware of this person and you're not standing for it anymore. Temperance is always about patience. So for some of you guys, it's that we have the five of swords right at the center. So this is indicating to me being at odds not being on the same page, constantly arguing, fighting, or bickering. Um, but I feel like this is the theme that's been happening. So it's put you in a position where you're extremely guarded at this point. And I see you a bit hesitant, wondering if you should continue putting effort. And I feel like for some of you guys, you're dealing, because the temperance, it does indicate patience, but it also indicates a process. So this has been a process for some of you guys, where this person keeps telling you they're going to do better, but they don't. Do you get what I'm saying? Every time they fuck up, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do better. I promise I'm going to do better. And they do better for like two days or a week. And then they go back to the same fuckery. This person is aware that you're very forgiving or that you accept their shortcomings. And they felt very secure in that. But I feel like something in you is switching where you're realizing I've had enough. I need to protect myself and I need to protect my heart. And I'm no longer going to be as forgiving. Or for some of you guys, you've literally blocked them or will be blocking them. Because you're no longer allowing them to have such control over you that they feel like they can come in and out of your life whenever they want to. Now, the advice position here is the two of wands. It's time for you to expand, Gemini. It's time for you to put yourself out there. It's time for you to walk away. Stop being so scared of walking away from a connection that you've been nothing but struggling in for quite a while. And the outcome is the seven of wands, standing your ground, knowing that you're not to be fucked with anymore, knowing that you're not playing anymore, that you're not going to do this emotional roller coaster thing because this person lacks consistency and lacks the possibility of offering you commitment. And for some of you guys, I, again, I'm being told you've been dealing with this cycle. So even if you're dealing with someone new and you feel like you're being pushed to be guarded because they're just giving you major red flags, understand that that's your awareness telling you we've been through this shit already. Walk away from it, Gemini. We've been through this. We've graduated from this shit already. 
walk away from it when you're seeing like don't try to turn those red flags into like beige flags you know what i mean like you've been through this you've dealt with it walk away being able to walk away you're being unapologetic about your worthiness you're not going to sit there and let someone try to lowball you in your worthiness and what i mean by that is if someone knows that you're expecting commitment or stability or consistency and they're not willing to give you that, they're lowballing you. They're seeing, let me go how far I can go, how far I can push Gemini until their breaking point and then no longer deal with me. And up until now, you haven't done that. But what they're showing me here is that, <laughs> yeah, you're coming into your power, Gemini, and you're no longer going to be, you know, excusing people's behaviors you're no longer going to be scared of walking away why because you're very self-aware of who you are of your power what you deserve and you're being unapologetic about it not only that but you know there's better out there and for some of you guys you're already entertaining other people or you will be entertaining other people why because gemini has options so the advice in this situation is again six of pentacles i'm seeing it in reverse so that's the reason why i'm saying this person is like, I promise you I'm going to do better, I'm going to do better, but they don't do better. And the reason they don't do better is because they know that they can get away with it because they have gotten away with the Gemini. So stop dealing with nonsense and fuckery. You're going through a glow up, Gemini. You're going through a glow up and you're going to be going through that glow up till next year. So again, Anything that is not serving you or anything that is disturbing your peace, walk away from. Because trust me when I tell you, the moment you choose yourself, and this is for every sign, this is every person I ever come across, I always tell them, when it comes to you, when it comes to what you want, do not let other people lowball you. And what do I mean by that? Whenever they know that you want something and they can't give that to you, but they still try to entertain you with less, that's lowballing you. Be unapologetic about what you want and walk away from anyone that is not going to give you that. The moment you do this, I promise everything changes for you, Gemini. All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on here with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about them? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancers. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, one more shuffle. Okay, here we go. Had to flow. <laughs> All righty, Cancer, let's see what's going on with you guys. Bottom of the deck. Sorry, not bottom. First card is the Five of Swords. What the heck? Six of Pentacles, Page of Cups, The Lovers, The King of Cups, Bottom of the Deck, Ten of Swords. For some of you guys, you may be dealing with a, with a Gemini, as I do see some cards that I pulled out for Gemini. Um, what they're showing me here with the Ten of Swords is there's an ending cycle that is happening in regards to this connection or in regards to your romantic sector. For some of you guys, it's romantic sector. Uh, the reason I say that is because I do see for a lot of you guys, there's a new person that's coming in. Now, with the Five of Swords right at the center, I feel like you're dealing with someone that is extremely prideful, Cancer. Someone that perhaps in the past you've let down or maybe you acted in a certain way that hurt them or made them feel unseen or unheard. And though they're still trying to put effort towards this connection, I feel like you feel that they're not doing enough or that they have given up. And again, the reason for it is what I'm being shown here with the Ten of Swords and the Five of Swords is that it was something that you guys have experienced together in the past where maybe there was hurt that was not mended. Maybe there was hurt that was not healed. It's kind of like the scenario. What I'm showing is almost like the scenario of when I have clients that 
go through a separation or a breakup or someone steps out of the relationship and then they're so scared of losing them that when the person comes back around, they immediately take them back instead of focusing on themselves and healing. So they don't give themselves enough time to heal that they jump back into that relationship. And then later on, they have problems or issues regarding distrust because they weren't able to heal from the experience they had just experienced. Do you get what I'm saying? So I feel like for some of you guys, you're dealing with this scenario. You're dealing with the situation where both of you guys kind of have been counting or writing down the wrongdoings of each other, that it's built up to the point where you guys are having difficulty expressing yourself or being completely honest and transparent. And it's almost like you guys are trying the best not to be vulnerable with each other. And it's only because both of you guys are feeling like you don't want to be taken advantage of or you don't want to be taken for granted. But again, I feel like this is from past traumas or past experiences. So it is that is what's currently built up to the point where you're at right now where you guys feel very disconnected. However, that cycle of feeling like you guys can't get it right or feeling like you guys can't get on the same page is coming to an end. And the reason I say that is because I see more so towards the end of October, beginning of November, there is a conversation that's going to be put on the table where someone is going to have enough, meaning I am tired of feeling like I can express myself and I think that we need to either figure out are we walking away from this connection and everyone goes their own separate ways or are we going to continue working towards building or rebuilding the solid foundation I feel like the moment that happens both of you guys are going to come together and fully open up in a vulnerable way where you guys feel the connection that you felt or have been feeling like it's been missing in your relationship. So think of it as like the, the boiling point where both of you guys have a lot to say and a lot of feelings, but you guys are not saying it. And it gets to the point where someone takes a, a direct approach of saying, are we going to work this out? Or are we going to fucking call it quits? Because I'm done trying to guess. And the moment that happens, it's like that's what breaks down the walls for both of you where you're able to communicate effectively and lovingly and express to each other truly what you guys feel for each other and that there is massive love still here and that there is a desire and want to rebuild this foundation. Um, so I see the rekindling of this connection. I see the rebuilding of this connection. I see the reconnecting because for a lot of you guys, you guys are very disconnected with this person or with your partner. Um, so again, now for others of you, if you've been feeling like when it comes to love and romance, you just haven't got it right, you're ending a cycle of constant strife in your partnerships. And keep in mind, uh, all cardinals are going through that transformation. Um, so cancer, obviously you're being affected. And what I mean by this is you have been challenged when it comes to your relationships. And I feel like if those of you guys that are watching this, if you're single or have been single for a while, maybe casually dealing with people, I feel like you're ending a cycle of strife when it comes to relationships. And there's a new connection that's coming in. There's a new person that's coming in that, um, potentially you can meet at the end of October, beginning of November. And this is a person that is off the bat going to tell you exactly what they're looking for. So what, I, what I'm hearing is I'm looking for commitment and I'm not looking for any games or any time to be wasted. Um, that blunt. And I feel like this is what creates immediate connection because both of you guys connect in that aspect. So again, if you guys are single out there, not going to be single for too long. <laughs> All right, my loves, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Leo. Let's see what's going on. Oh, let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to their person. How does their person feel about Leo? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Leo? Let's see what's going on with my Leos out there. You guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Like I said, we are at the busiest season. So if you guys are interested in personal readings or 
any personal spell work um, or any of our manifestation journals or shadow books. You can find all of those links on the description box below. Um, keep in mind when it comes to personal readings and spell work, like I said, it is the busiest season. So if uh, you go on there and it says out of stock or whatnot or unavailable, it's because we're trying to catch up to order. So just putting it out there for you guys to know. Also highly encourage you guys to follow our other social medias, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. Um, I'm more proactive on Snapchat and Instagram, so you guys follow me on there. Make sure you're following the real Pinky, not the thousands of fakes out there. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Leo? Let's see what's going on with my Leos out there. First card is the Death card. We have the Queen of Wands, we have the Four of Cups, we have the Seven of Cups, we have Temper, whoa, we have Temperance, bottom of the deck, Seven of Swords. What the heck is going on, Leo? All right. All right, so with the Seven of Swords, I feel like right now, Leo, you guys are being challenged in the sense of are you paying attention to your intuition? I feel like the seven of swords has more of a caring energy of ignoring or maybe not being completely honest with yourself. There's something that you're scared to say out loud. And I'm going to be completely honest with the death card right at the center. I feel like for some of you guys, you're going through a cycle of realization that maybe this relationship is not what it was. Or maybe you're coming to the realization that you want more. And I'm saying this because I, I felt immediately with the Seven of Swords, I felt like I felt this incredible like push um, that I usually feel when I'm dealing with clients. And I feel like I want to be aggressively myself and express myself and spirits like, no, 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 you got to be nice. <laughs> so I have to kind of filter myself. Yeah, that's what I sensed when I seen the Seven of Swords. So I feel like there is something about this connection or relationship that you're not being completely honest with yourself about, Leo. And it has you feeling a little bit frustrated or it has you feeling a little bit doubting for some of you guys. Um, because your position is the queen of wands and that's your energy, Leo. But I feel like there is a part of you, I get it, there is a part of you that feels you cannot fully be yourself or you cannot fully express yourself or you cannot be who you authentically are because maybe you feel like you have to portray yourself or be a certain type around your partner. Now, the death card does symbolize transformation. It also does indicate an ending cycle, an ending for some of you guys, it could be that you recently went through an ending because of this, because you felt like the person wasn't putting as much effort or the person that you were dealing with in some way was trying to alter or change something about you where you felt like at this point you felt suffocated. For some of you guys, you're feeling it right now. You're going through that. I feel like there is a lot that's happening right now, Leo. And the reason I say that is, I mean, Seven of Swords, Four of Cups, Seven of Cups. It's like all about distractions. It's all about uh, feeling a bit emotional. Maybe you're maybe you've been feeling like on an emotional roller coaster. Maybe you've been feeling like one day you want to end the relationship. The next day you're like, I don't know if I want to keep putting effort. And then the next day you're like, let me put effort. Um, but with with the four of cups here representing how your partner is being this situation i feel like with the four of cups this is indicating to me that there is a feeling that you're not in it anymore or there is an understanding there's like an underlying tone to them understanding that the connection is not what it was or that it's not as passionate or as intense as it once was um your advice position here with the seven of cups, I'm going to be honest, Leo, they're telling you, get your emotions in order. 
the reason I say this is because I feel like maybe you are experiencing a lot of emotions right now and this can sometimes play tricks on us like when we have a lot of emotions and we feel like we're going through an emotional roller coaster even if it's about other things in your life it's definitely going to impact your partnership and your relationships um but if you're being distracted or if you feel like there's a lot of things going on and maybe you're feeling like this relationship or this connection is becoming a burden more than like something exciting um that could be the reason why you're feeling this way so again, I don't want to necessarily say that it has more to do with this connection. I think that it has a lot to do with what you're experiencing astrologically right now, Leo. Now, for those of you guys that are single, if you recently became single because you felt like this person was being deceitful or wasn't being completely honest or maybe like their attention wasn't towards you, what Spirit is telling you is pour all that energy and all that effort on yourself, Leo, because there is a revamping of energy that's going to be happening that is going to be unfolding for you. Not only are you going to have options, but with the temperance card here, there is a healing process that you're currently going through or that you will be going through. And I feel like that healing aspect is embracing this queen of wands, which is your energy, Leo. So what I mean by that is putting yourself together. So this, these messages are going to connect with you guys in many different ways. But what the ultimate message here is, is that I'm seeing that you guys are currently going through a bit of a challenging, um, you're being challenged a bit when it comes to relationships and partnerships. The universe just wants you to be very vocal and very transparent and very crystal clear on what it is that you want moving forward. Because I feel like, I'm going to be honest, for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are dealing with like a long-term committed relationship, I feel like you're not being honest with yourself because you feel like you can't express yourself or you cannot be who you really are. You kind of feel like you have to water yourself down to accommodate your partner. But in that aspect, your partner is also viewing you like you've lost lust for life. And that's something that they were very like they admired about you. So I feel like on on both spectrums, there is a feeling of disconnection, but it has more to do with you're disconnecting because you feel like you have to be a certain way and your partner is viewing you as like what happened to Leo. They're not as intense or passionate as they once were. It, you guys are just not communicating and you're not expressing or you're not being vulnerable and open with each other. So again, my advice is stop thinking that you need to like walk on eggshells. Stop thinking that you need to water yourself down. It's time for you to be completely honest and transparent about what it is that you want. And guess what, Leo? If this relationship is not what you want, speak up. You have the right. It is your life to decide. Okay. All right, my loves. Moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Last but not least, Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Virgo? How does the person of Virgo feel about them? Let's see what's going on with my Virgos out there. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How does their person feel about Virgo? Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more shuffle. Thank you, Spirit. Here we go. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right. First card we have here is the Five of Wands. The Emperor. The Two of Cups. The Five of Swords. The Eight of Wands, bottom of the deck, Four of Swords. Okay, so for some of you Virgos, you may be dealing with the situation where there's no communication right now. For others of you, you're feeling a bit disconnected. For some of you guys, you're just feeling a little bit antisocial. Maybe there's a lot of things that are going on right now in your life. However, right at the center, off the bat, when I see the Five of Wands, I am hearing prospects. I'm hearing suitors. So... I feel like you're viewing your person. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with an Aries. You could be dealing with a water energy, fire. You're viewing this person as a bit stubborn, Virgo. And maybe this is the challenge for you because you feel like they are not 
vocal about what they want or they're not vocal about what it is that they want in this relationship and how they progress. For some of you guys, you're dealing with the situation where you feel like at this point, I want some type of commitment because emperor is structure. So there's a desire here to be more clear and transparent in regards to this connection. What are we doing? Where is it going? Type of thing. But right at the center, when I seen the five of wands, again, like I said, I immediately heard suitors, options. I'm going to be honest, Virgo. I feel like if you've been dealing with the person that doesn't really want to commit or has had commitment issues in the past, I feel that that's no longer going to be the case. And the reason for this is because they are either seeing that you have options or they are realizing that that you do got it like that or that you do get attention i don't know there's something like they're seeing you on a completely different like they're seeing you from a completely different perspective i don't know what happened here i don't know what happened recently but they are showing me almost like they're being very watchful of the people the energy that people evoke around you like there is something about you that they're realizing Virgo is it. Virgo is who I want. Um, whereas in the past they were hesitant. It's What I'm hearing is I'm not going to let Virgo go. So for some of you guys, again, if you've been dealing with some with a situation or a relationship where you felt like you didn't know where it was going, I feel like this is the month where they open up to you, Virgo, and they tell you exactly that they want a relationship. They're going to be like, I want to make it official. Like, let's make it official let's take it to the next level, let's move forward type of thing. And I feel for a lot of you guys, you're going to feel like it comes out of nowhere. Maybe because you've been waiting for to hear this for a long time. For some of you guys, maybe because you guys haven't been communicating. Maybe they ghosted you. Maybe you ghosted them because you got tired of the games. Maybe communication hasn't been the way it was. Um... And it's gonna, it's catching you by surprise. It, I'm, I'm hearing you guys gasp, like, oh my god, like they, they actually are telling me that they have feelings for me. They're actually telling me that they want a connection, that they want a relationship. And for some of you guys, it's gonna come because when communication does happen, I feel like you're at the point of saying, I'm tired of this shit, or enough is enough. Either we. Either we know exactly what we're what we're doing here, where we're going, or like there's the door. But I feel like for a lot of you Virgos, you're going to get to this point of empowerment, honestly, because you're getting attention or because you're starting to embrace new attention. Like, I'm not going to lie. I immediately, when I seen the five of wands, hot commodity. So I feel like this is empowering you. This is making you feel like, you know what? I've been waiting for this type of commitment or I've been waiting for some type of commitment from you and you haven't done it. And here is other people that are not only embracing me or are not only wanting to take me out. They're willing to dine and wine and dine me. They're willing to, you know, actively pursue me. Like, fuck this. Do you get me? And I feel like the moment, the moment that you disconnect from this, the moment that you disconnect and embrace the attention surrounding you or the attention that's coming towards you, Virgo, that's what empowers you. And that's when they start to feel, you know what? I want Virgo. Like, let's stop the games. Let's stop the mind games. Let's stop trying to make each other jealous. Let's just be honest. And I want you, Virgo, and I'm offering you this commitment. I'm hearing, like, let's make it official let's make it exclusive when this happens Virgo they're asking you be advised is the five of swords do not let pride get in the way especially those of you guys that are already or will be already embracing new connections if this is someone that you've been working on building something with don't let your pride get in the way because believe it or not, when they come to you, this is them genuinely, authentically opening up. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, you've been dealing with someone that maybe in the past um, was really let down. And that's the reason why it's not that they had commitment issues more so. It has more to do with the fear of getting hurt. So again, don't let the fear 
right? And your pride get the best of you. Walk away from that to fully embrace their vulnerability because doing so, the outcome is the eight of wands. Massive momentum, quick momentum, passion, intensity. It's going to move rather quickly. And for some of you guys, like I said, with the emperor here in the feelings it's about structure with the emperor. So it's something that you've been working towards for a while or that you've been hoping. And when this person finally opens up, you don't want to shut them down because then they it's almost like their fear became a reality. Not only that, but if you do happen to shut them down, they're quickly going to shut down and walk away. Embrace this for you, Virgo, because I do see it having the potential for something long term, even if you're not in connection with this person right now, even if there's not communication or p very poor communication. I feel like there's a massive turnaround in this situation and it has a lot to do with you embracing your power. It has a lot to do with maybe being more confident in yourself, maybe believing more in yourself, knowing you're worthy, or unfortunately, sometimes we need to see outside of us people give us attention to feel like we're worthy and i feel for a lot of you guys this is what's happening people are giving you attention people are coming towards you people are proactively pursuing you that it's putting you in a position of feeling like you know what now i have options and that's a beautiful thing because you're being empowered right but don't let your ego get in the way all right my loves all right, Virgo, that is it for all of the signs. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and I will see you guys soon. I will be more proactive on here. So follow us so you guys can get notified when we go live. I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.